Hello, I'm Ben Jones from Hellion. Uh, we're here at uh, Locomotion in Shildon today to take a look at the ES1, which uh, is the subject of a new model made by Hellion for Locomotion and Rails. Around the beginning of 2021, Rails and Locomotion came to us um, and said that they were interested in producing a model of the ES1 for their national collection and miniature uh, series. Um, and asked us if we were interested in producing it, which we obviously were. Um, then in May 2021, we came up, surveyed the local, spent the whole day here, measuring, photographing, climbing all over on the roof and everything, um, which was a, a really interesting day to, to sort of get to know the local really well. Um, and then after that, we uh, were lucky enough to get in the search engine at, uh, at York Museum where they've got a, a good set of original Northeastern Railway drawings, uh, which again was a, a, a really nice uh, way to spend a day looking at all the drawings and seeing what needed to be done. Uh, and then after that, we put a, a research package together, which um, our designer turned into CAD. Um, we got through that pretty quickly because we got such a, a really strong uh, set of source materials, original sources. Um, once the CAD was done, we did when, went through a couple of engineering prototypes um, and then a couple of months ago we got decorated samples which we've been able to turn around really quickly, have come out really nicely. And then we're, yeah, um, in, as I speak, in October, uh, we're, um, the models are on the way from China and they should be here before Christmas. Well, my name's Bob Gwynn. I'm the uh, Associate Curator at the National Railway Museum. And uh, part of my job is to know about the collection. And I'm particularly interested in the post-steam age. So this is one of the things that gets my interest. Well, this one was built for the Northeastern Railway. It actually went into traffic in 1905. And it's basically a steeple cab electric locomotive. It's really Britain's first electric freight locomotive. And um, it was built by Brush. Uh, it's got British Thompson Houston uh, electrical equipment inside it and it was built for a very specific purpose and that's one of the things that electric power very early on was proven to be good at and that is working through tunnels and this one used to have to work down a tunnel at a gradient of about 1 in 27 for about three quarters of a mile and out onto Newcastle docks and that's what it did and it was more powerful than the steam it replaced and of course from the crew's point of view it was a damn sight better because you weren't being roasted, smoked or poached as you went up the tunnels on a steam loco. Instead of this, you were using electric power from the third rail and you could actually haul more wagons behind you up to the yards where you exchanged those for the freight trains moving on. Well, back in 1905, electrification was just starting in the UK. You'd only just opened the Lancashire and Yorkshire electrification between Liverpool and Southport and of course the northeastern electrification round Tyneside. Um, and Mertz, Charles Hesterman Mertz, of course based on Tyneside, he persuaded uh, the um, northeastern general manager, Gibb, uh, to electrify. Um, so it was obvious that the other thing you needed to look at was how you dealt, dealt with things like the, uh, the docks branch as well. Um, and they looked at that and it's 630 volts DC. Um, so it was really ahead of its time and if you look at where they were heading in terms of, of a company they were really quite interested in more electrification. I mean we're stood in Shildon, the Shildon electrification happens just a bit after that and then of course Raven comes in and he looks at York Newcastle electrification so it's really the, one of the stepping stones towards that was what its intention and it's a classic steeple cab of its period. I mean. Um, they, they'd done one of these, something like this in Italy, and then um, the central line in London, which was a central London railway, just a bit before had steeple cabs uh, running on their trains. So, you know, it's a, it's a very early representation of an electric locomotive, and it's, it's great to have it in the collection. Well, it starts in Tide Dock, and pretty much it ends in Tide Dock, basically. It works 59 years up and down those tunnels. Um, I don't know, it has a few accidents. There's a few times when they forget to take the pantograph down because 
um, the pantograph was for work in the yards, whereas the third rail was going down the tunnel. So if you get to take the pantograph down, then a bit of a prang. Um, no doubt there's a few dints on the side of it because it's a freight engine. We're fitted with air brakes, they never used them. Um, and it could have worked in multiple. They never did that either. Um, and there were two of them. And they just worked as twins up and down that branch, right up until 64, when you actually, you're starting to get the, the tail end of, of wagon load freight. Um, so at that stage, um, they are retired. And we're very lucky because the other one is cut up, but this one is taken into uh, the start of the national collection at that point. And then it, it bounces from store to store to store until finally you can get it on public display. These are the uh, pre-production samples, livery samples of uh, all five versions that are going to be released. So there are uh, two northeastern livery ones for um, locomotion models, and one is in early 19th century condition, um, version one as we call it, which has got um, the original collector shoes on the ends of the bogies, and it's got the original uh, oddly shaped handrail on one of the bonnets. And the reason that's there is because when these locos were built, they didn't have a pantograph, they had a, a trolley pole. Um, that was removed fairly early on. Um, so we, we didn't do that version because they spent most of their lives with the pantograph like this. So, um, so that's Northeastern Railway condition. Then we've got um, same loco, but still in Northeastern Railway's livery, but uh, as it is now. So this is the museum edition uh, and that's as you can see in front of you. Um, and it's got the collector shoes in the later position underneath the shoe, underneath the shoe beam. Um, and there's a few other differences as well, handrails and uh, brake pipes, things like that, that are in different positions. And then either side, we've got um, the three versions which are gonna be sold by uh, Rails of Sheffield. We've got Eleni R Black, which uh, still has the collector shoes in the original position. Um, that's uh, obviously pre-1948. You've got a post-1948 version, BR Black with the early crest on, sorry, early emblem, as I should call it. Um, and then finally, you've got uh, probably the version that most people will remember these locos in, which is northeastern green, but with the BR Lake crest on, which is their final condition that they ran in until about 1963, I think. All the all the uh, features are the sort of things that you would expect to see on a model released in 2022. You've got um, the headlights work, which is a, uh, we're really pleased with because they stand proud of the bonnets and it's quite a small fitting. But you, you've got the big the headlights on the, on the bonnets work. It's got a, a cab interior light. Uh, it's got uh, a sprung pantograph, um, sprung buffers, um, drives on all wheels. Um, and there's a uh, space inside for a speaker uh, and it's a uh, because there's a limited space in the bonnets it's a next 18 uh, decoder interface but there's plenty of space inside for to fit that and a speaker so you could have a sound fitted one as well i mean the main challenge is fitting everything in because uh, unlike a, a normal electric loco or a diesel loco which is a box effectively a box on wheels uh, or a steam loco where, loco where you've got a big boiler you can hide things in you've got on this one you've got um, a cab which you need to try and keep an as open as possible um, and we've we've managed that but the the floor is slightly higher on the model than it is on the real thing and that's because the motors the motors underneath it um, the so the challenge there is that uh, after that has been then fitting the the gearboxes the the gear towers and the drive shafts and all that into those sloping bonnets so yeah it's uh, it's a it was a tricky job to fit all that into a, into a small package. And as you can see, it's not a big local by any means. People will probably remember from the early years of Hellion, we, um, we had the really big sturdy blue boxes with the solid lift-off lids. We're, we're going back to that now. We're getting away from the um, window box ones, which were getting a, a bit flimsy. Um, these, are, these are much more robust. They have a, a, a better feeling of quality about them. 
Uh, and for this project, we've, uh, we've done, obviously there's two different colours, the house colours for locomotion models for the two northeastern ones, and then the three green ones in, uh, in rails house colours for the, um, uh, for the L and the R and BR ones. Um, inside, you've got um, a lot of foam to protect it, but you've also got um, our new instruction sheet, which is up to the latest standard. It's a, a, a nice instruction sheet with local history, and parts lists and you know all the all the information you need to uh, care for and, and operate your model um, so it's a it's a really nice package um, it's something that we're we're really pleased that we've been able to go back to We're always pleased to be asked to, to produce something uh, for, for the Railway Museum and for retailers as, a, as an exclusive because they're, they're usually really interesting, quite often quirky subjects. This one in particular has a, a, is really interesting for me because it's such a pioneer. Um, there's a lot of talk these days about um, electrification, decarbonisation, that sort of thing. This loco dates from 1905, uh, went into service in 1905, uh, fully electric. Uh, replacing steam engines through uh, really filthy, uh, narrow tunnels in Newcastle uh, and transform the lives of the, of the staff who had to work that line. Um, it was a, you know, it's, um, it's an electric loco that's um, an ancestor of the, of the stuff we see out on the, on the, on the railways these days. Um, so it's, uh, and it's had a, it had a really fascinating life. So yeah, from that point of view, it's, from, for me as, a, as somebody who's interested in railway history um, and the sort of social and economic uh, role of the railway in, in, in the world, it's, um, it's a really interesting pioneer. We're expecting to see them before Christmas uh, and they'll be available from, uh, exclusively from uh, locomotion models. That's the two Northeastern Railway livery ones. Uh, and then the three others, the BR, L and the R versions, will be available from rails and they're £220.